This is a demonstration of a Beckman 1.8x spry cleanup. They're recommended cleanup for a PCR reaction meant to eliminate material below 100 base pair. A protocol is available with every bottle of spry. We have previously used Kyogen products like mini loot columns and Kyquick plates, but found that spry is better at getting rid of primer and adapter and lends itself to use with automation. Begin with a sample in a 1.5 milliliter tube and a bottle of spry that has been well mixed by vigorous shaking or vortexing. Add a volume of spry beads equal to 1.8 times the volume of the sample to your sample tube. Pipette mix or vortex to achieve uniform mixture. Allow two minutes for sample DNA to bind to the beads, then put the tube on the magnet. After three minutes, the solution will be clear and the beads will be held to the side of the tube by the magnet, separate from the solution. Leaving the tube on the magnet and without disturbing the beads, pipette off and discard the supernatant containing unwanted material. Once that's been removed, wash with 100 milliliter, 70% ethanol to remove any remaining material not bound to the beads. Wait 30 seconds before pipetting off the ethanol wash to ensure that any beads that were disturbed are drawn back to the sides of the tube. Pull the tube off the magnet and leave the cap open to allow the beads to air dry for 6 minutes. After all the residual ethanol has evaporated, elute off the beads adding 40 microliter elution buffer. Pipette mix the beads and EB until homogeneous and wait for 2 minutes before putting the tube back on the magnet for 3 minutes. Once the beads have separated from solution, without disturbing the beads, transfer the eluate to a fresh 1.5 milliliter tube. This is the final sample, cleaned of erroneous material and DNA below 100 base pair. What we're showing is the automated setup for a typical 1.8x spry PCR cleanup for 96 samples. This is our typical deck layout. Across the back of the deck, in positions 1 through 3, we have the tips we use for all our reagents. The tips on the left side, position 1, are used for the addition of the spry beads, mixing, and supernatant removal. The tips in the middle, position 2, are used for ethanol washing. The tips on the right, position 3, are for elution, and transfer into 2D matrix barcoded tubes. Across the middle of the deck, you will see all of the reagents in 96 well plates. On the left side, position 4, are the spry beads. There are approximately 100 microliters of spry beads in each well. In the middle, position 5, there is the 70% ethanol used to wash the beads. On the right side, position 6, there is the elution buffer. All of the reagents are in 96 well plates to avoid cross-contamination from sample to sample. We decided this was a better alternative to open source reservoirs. Across the front of the deck, on the left, position 7, are a rack of 96 2D barcoded matrix tubes. This is where the final cleaned samples will be transferred to at the end of the protocol. In the middle, position 8, is the actual pcr 50 microliter sample. There are 96 samples in this plate. On the right side, position 9, is the magnet, which will be used to separate the beads once our DNA has been bound. This is what a typical protocol would look like using the Bravo automated liquid handler controlled by the VWorks software. Everything you've just seen done manually will be done on the deck. A typical workflow is that the user will come to the station, load up all the specific tips, reagents, and samples into their proper positions on the deck, open the appropriate protocol, and hit the start button. The protocol runs for approximately 25 minutes. At the end of the protocol, the cleaned sample will be in the 2D matrix barcoded tubes, ready for further quantification or registration. The first step in the protocol is where the tips are put on the head.
The robot will then mix the spry beads to ensure a homogeneous mixture. Next, 90 microliter of spry will be added to the sample. The spry beads are now being added to the sample, which will then be mixed and incubated at room temperature for two minutes to ensure optimal binding of the desired DNA onto the beads. After our two-minute incubation, the Bravo will then move the sample plate onto the magnet at position 9, where it will incubate for three minutes to precipitate the beads to each side of the well, resulting in the unwanted material in the supernatant. After the three-minute incubation, the Bravo clears the supernatant, which contains any unwanted material from the beads that are attached to the sides of the well. The supernatant is dispensed into the plate that used to contain our spry beads. The advantage of aliquoting reagents into 96 well plates is that it limits sample-to-sample -sample cross contamination and it also allows the user to easily configure the deck and, after the protocol is complete, easily clean up. Next, the beads which are still stuck to the sides of the well are washed with 100 microliter of 70% ethanol to remove any residual waste that may still be in the wells. The ethanol that was used to wash the sample is aspirated from the sample plate and dispensed back into the plate that used to contain the clean 70% ethanol. After completing the ethanol wash, the plate is then moved off the magnet and back to position 8 to allow any residual ethanol to evaporate at room temperature for 6 minutes. After the 6-minute incubation, the samples are eluted using 40 microliters of elution buffer. Upon adding the elution buffer to the DNA, the spry beads are mixed to ensure a homogeneous mixture. Once it's been mixed, it is allowed to incubate for two minutes at room temperature to ensure optimal elution. The plate is moved back onto the magnet for two minutes. After two minutes on the magnet, our eluted DNA is transferred into the 2D matrix barcoded tubes for registration. After the samples have been cleaned up using SPRY, we will register the samples into our LIMS database. The way we do this is using a linear barcode scanner combined with a 2D barcode scanner. By putting a linear barcode on the 2D barcoded plate, we can then track where that full plate goes through our LIMS system. The way we do this is we select the appropriate command in LIMS and the scanner scans the plate. Once we scan our tubes into our LIMS system, we can then fill out all of our desired information such as volume and concentration.